I remember when I was in school, I learnt numbers uh, as one, two, three, and so on. But then when I saw my class board, it had class one written on it, you know, first standard, and sometimes uh, we call it STD. So first standard, and then second standard was not written as two, but but two I's, and uh, you know second standard, third standard was written like this. Fourth was written like this, an I and a V, and I did not understand what was going on. So I asked my uh, teacher, "What are these? Why are we writing? Why aren't we writing just second standard like this?" And uh, she said, "Oh, these that you are used to, they are Hindu Arabic numerals, the ones that we usually use. But there are other kinds of numerals called Roman numerals, and that got me really curious, and also a little bit confused." I was asking why are there more than one ways to write numbers, and if these are Roman numerals, why don't we use them anymore? And of course, what are they in the in the first place, and uh, why should I even learn them? That was my main question. So why should I know one more way of writing numbers when I just have one already? And the more I learned about it, I realized that it was learning about Roman numerals is sort of like visiting a math museum. Uh, if you have gone to a normal or a usual museum, you you might be used to seeing uh, uh, dinosaurs or or their uh, uh, skeletons. I've seen some fossils as well, and these show us that the way the world is today is not the way it always was. We had other ways of doing things which we don't do anymore. And I realized that Roman numerals or learning Roman numerals is similar to that. We can go back in time and see how we used to count. and even think about questions like why we don't count like that anymore and is the, is what we're doing today better and if so how so i learned more about roman numerals i had these alphabets denoting some numbers just like in my usual numbers i have 1 2 3 4 what i call when i say usual i mean the hindu arabic uh, numerals i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 these are my digits and using these i can make every other number possible so these are the digits of the hindu arabic system of course if i also include the the pretty important zero to it so 0 to 9 make my hindu arabic numerals similarly in the roman system they had i v x l c d m Now uh, these weren't really the English alphabets that they used, right? We just picked the English alphabets that uh, looked closest to the symbols that they were using. They were using some symbol that looked like this, like a stick, basically, just a vertical stick to denote one. And then they had a symbol V for five, X for ten, L for fifty, and C for hundred. And that's this is probably um, enough if you know these. I mean, if you're interested, then there's D and this LCD always sticks out to me. D is for five hundred and M is for thousand. Now you can notice that uh, using these, we don't yet know how to form, how to read or write Roman numerals. All we now know is that these are the digits that they use. So in the Hindu Arabic system, maybe I should write Hindu Arabic over here. Hindu Arabic system. How do we write numbers using these? If I want to write a hundred and twenty, then I would take a hundred in my third digit as my third digit, and then put my two tens and then zero ones, and then I'll call this hundred and twenty. So I'm using the place value system, which you're probably familiar with uh, right now. The place va- place value system. The Roman numerals did not have a place value system, and uh, they did not even have a specific alphabet for zero. So there is no zero, if you can see here. So they were quite a bit different from our Hindu Arabic numerals. But the interesting thing here is to learn how do we read and write in them. And it's not really to remember to do that. You probably won't be doing it too often. It's just a fun exercise that we're going to be doing to our own brains.